Well, welcome to the second half of this tutorial on global illumination. First, I should note that I've moved back to using Houdini 9.5 because in the early builds of Houdini 10 there are some problems with some of the methods that uh, we're going to demonstrate later on. Hopefully these will be fixed uh, pretty soon. So, to start with, let's talk briefly about transparent <coughs> ambient occlusion. Transparent ambient occlusion is identical to ambient occlusion except that it takes into account the transparency of the objects uh, in the scene. We're not going to cover that in any more detail. The next option is full irradiance. Here's a brief explanation of how it works. Full irradiance works like ambient occlusion in that it sends out rays from the point we are shading. But instead of just counting hits, it evaluates the direct lighting at each of the points that is hit. This lighting is then accumulated at the point we're shading. In effect, we're calculating an extra bounce of direct light. Full irradiance is sometimes called final gathering in other applications, and is more or less equivalent to methods that calculate an extra diffuse bounce. So let's try rendering our scene with full irradiance and see what it looks like. And here it is. As you can see it's a relatively subtle effect. Zoom in. We can see that there's some reflected light illuminating the floor around the teapot here and at the back of it. There's quite a bit of grain in here and you would need to uh, use the irradiance cache settings and the number of samples to try to get rid of that. And this becomes, the grain becomes particularly noticeable if we increase the brightness. You wouldn't be able to use this scene uh, in a commercial production. There's a further uh, version of full irradiance which works in a very similar way and that's called path tracing. And it's the final option that's available here in the Global Illumination shader. So we'll do a quick render and see how that compares. And here we have it. The version rendered using path tracing looks very similar indeed to the version rendered using full irradiance. Now we can have a look at another scene which will illustrate a bit more clearly uh, what full irradiance and path tracing can do for you. So here we have a scene with a couple of walls, there's a floor, and there's a wall at the back here which is illuminated by a spotlight uh, down here. So what we want to replicate is the light reflecting off this wall at the end and reflecting onto the floor and the walls here which aren't illuminated unless uh, there is some interreflection. If we do a standard render and we'll put down a render node at the moment I haven't got any global illumination in the scene and if we render we get, as expected, a completely dark scene apart from the wall at the end. So let's uh, lay down some global illumination. So we'll start with the FEX global illumination shader. And then in the object network, I need to put down a light template. And then we set the template shader to be the global illumination light. So again I'm going to reduce the number of samples here and let's start with full irradiance. Let's render the scene and see what we get. But as you can see the scene's a lot brighter than you might expect. There seems to be light coming from somewhere else other than just from the wall at the end of the, the scene here. And indeed that's the case, because if we look at our 
Global Illumination shader, it has uh, this parameter background color. And it's this which um, controls what happens when rays don't hit anything. So in this case, when we're shooting out a full irradiance ray and it goes off to infinity, it comes back with the color here, which is white. That's why these surfaces are almost fully illuminated. If we just want to get the reflection off this wall at the end, we need to set this to black. So let's do that and have another look. And as you can see, we have a much more subtle effect, more like what we would be looking for. Let's increase the brightness a bit so that we can see what's happening. We're getting some light reflected onto the floor here, these side walls, and then further back, there's some light reflecting off of the floor onto these walls here. Now, this isn't uh, terribly accurate, and we need to look at the irradiance cache settings to get something a little finer. Let's see how it would look when we render it using path tracing. Again, a very similar outcome. But unlike uh, full irradiance, path tracing uses the PBR shader, uh, the PBR renderer. So we can adjust some of the settings for the PBR render in our render node go to the properties tab and go right to the end we have this tab PBR that has the settings for how the PBR renderer renders. The one we're interested in is the diffuse limit. This sets the number of bounces that are calculated for light reflecting diffusely. Now we get one automatically because we're using path tracing but we can increase this to a higher value and then we'll get several bounces of light. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. As you can see, we're getting more illumination in the scene because the light from here is able to bounce to here, to here, and onto a third wall, and three bounces. So the illumination is being spread more widely.